He began to run a constant high fever, and he barely had the energy to crawl out of bed. Every time he called 911 to ask for an ambulance, he always got a busy tone because, well, probably because the hospitals in the area had lost power and were already overcrowded with hundreds of sick and injured people. The roads were also not accessible yet by car. By the time my friend reached a hospital, his hand had swollen to the size of a football, and he was in great pain. As he desperately tried to get to the front of the line, he almost fainted a few times and had to be propped up by others. Tom told me he was one of the lucky ones who managed to see a doctor before it was too late. The doctor examined his hand and prescribed some antibiotics. Things were on the mend, but then an unforeseen problem came up. Overcrowded hospitals with lackluster sanitation and hygiene are the perfect breeding environments for germs. Tom's already weakened body picked up another, more aggressive bacteria that didn't respond to the usual treatment. I know firsthand that in the U.S., hospital administrators are pulling their hair out, wondering how to reduce hospital-acquired infections. The rate can be alarmingly high. In a crisis, you might have a much better chance of picking up an infection in a hospital than if the doctor performed the procedure in your own bedroom. At least at home, you have germs that you've developed an immunity against, and they're usually not resistant to every antibiotic known to man. After lying in a hospital bed for weeks on end, pumped full of intravenous antibiotics, Tom finally began to recover. The doctors were able to save his life. Others were not so fortunate, and despite what the media and government would have you believe, the greatest number of casualties after Katrina were not caused by the flooding itself, but by the infections in the medical crisis that followed. That's why every person should have some antibiotics stockpiled at home. In a crisis, it may be too late to find out what you really need, or doing so may put you in harm's way. If Tom would have had just a few antibiotics at home, he would have never had to leave his house. How do you stockpile enough life-saving antibiotics without a prescription? When there were no more antibiotics in hospitals and pharmacies across Venezuela, doctors there discovered fish and bird antibiotics could be used to treat their patients. Believe it or not, they have the same active substances found in human antibiotics. Every capsule of fish mox, for example, contains nothing but 250 milligrams of amoxicillin, the same substance found in amoxicillin capsules for humans. A substance is a substance, after all. Most importantly, they don't require a prescription. You can order a month's supply for just $10 online or from a pet store almost anywhere in America. Plus, you can stockpile as many of them as you please because they keep good for years. If one day your life or the life of someone you love were to depend on it, how would you feel knowing you could still have this ace in the hole? Of course, you should always take human antibiotics if they're still available and only after consulting a doctor. I also don't advise taking antibiotics for every minor problem. I've probably only used them four or five times in my life. Now, I suspect that you, like many other people, have a small medicine cabinet at home. Maybe it's not fully stocked, but at least you have some painkillers, an anti-inflammatory, or some other medication you need in there. Just imagine that's all gone tomorrow and you can't buy anymore. What will you do? My guess is that sooner or later, you'll do what they did in Venezuela. You will turn to the medicinal plants growing in your backyard or in a nearby forest or park. They have so much more to offer than you might think, but it isn't until people run almost out of medicine completely that they realize that. If you don't know this already, many of the medicines on the market today are still derived from substances found in common plants. Aspirin is made from the bark of the willow tree, and with the right knowledge, you can extract it yourself to lower a fever or fight pain and inflammation. The flu medicine known as Tamiflu is derived from a plant called the star anise. About 90% of the world's star anise crop is used to make Tamiflu. An alkaloid from this tree was discovered to be effective against malaria and light cramps. Today we call the drug quinine. You can find it at the retail price of $218 at Walgreens. And this fungus contains a powerful immunosuppressive substance that can ameliorate symptoms of multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune conditions. The derived 